Transferring a critically ill patient immediately exposes them to a number of potential adverse physiological effects. These can either be due to movement of the patient on the trolley or in the ambulance, or related to putting the patient into an exposed environment. Knowledge of these potential adverse effects is important in planning a safe transfer, both for the patient, yourself, and the rest of the transfer team. Potential hazards in uh, a transfer can be considered to either be dynamic or, or static. Let's think about the dynamic hazards first. Uh, in a body that's accelerated, for example in a lift, uh, the movable organs will tend to move in the opposite direction, and this is known as inertia. The most important uh, organ that this affects is the blood, and if you accelerate a body towards the head, blood will tend to pull in the feet, with the result of decreased venous return reduced cardiac output, hypotension, a fall in cerebrovascular blood flow with a potential for seizures and secondary brain injury. In normal individuals, the effects of inertial forces are limited by activation of the sympathetic nervous system. But in critically ill patients, uh, this is limited by the effect of sedation and vasoactive drugs. But there are a number of things you can do to try and limit the, these effects on the cardiovascular system. These are make sure the patient is properly volume resuscitated before starting the transfer. You can potentially use an anti-gravity suit or trousers. Uh, you can think about lifting the legs up during transfer to improve venous return. And finally, don't forget you can always ask the driver uh, to drive more carefully and limit the acceleratory forces. Deceleratory forces have the opposite effect. Uh, as a body is decelerated, blood tends to go towards the chest and the head. And in fact, deceleratory forces are much more powerful than the acceleratory forces previously mentioned because ambulances tend to be able to brake much more quickly than they can accelerate. Deceleratory forces have some important effects. There'll be an increased return of blood to the heart, causing increased atrial pressure and potentially heart failure. There's an increase in intracranial pressure, which again could potentially worsen secondary brain injury. And thirdly, gastric contents may reflux and potentially aspirate. Limiting the effects of deceleration can be done in a number of ways. Obviously, firstly, you can ask the driver to be gentle on the brakes, and that's probably one of the most important things to do. Secondly, have the patient sat slightly head up. That will limit the amount of blood that returns to the heart and the head. And thirdly, ensure adequate gastric emptying by using a nasogastric tube and having it on free drainage. Acceleration and deceleration can also have effects on vertebra. In particular, compression or distraction of bones, particularly in an unstable fracture, can result in more serious injury to the patient. The main way of preventing this is to provide a smooth transfer. Remember that you, the patient and everything else in the ambulance are all subject to inertial forces and these could potentially lead to serious injury. Make sure the patient is securely fastened to the transfer trolley. Use your seat belt and if you need to get up, make sure that you let the ambulance crew know before you do. And thirdly, ensure that all the equipment in the ambulance is secured before leaving. The static hazards we need to consider in relation to patient transfer a vibration, noise, temperature and motion sickness. Uh, the effects of vibration can be very damaging to soft tissue and fractured limbs. Pressure areas and contact points should be well padded and protected. The effects of temperature changes are best managed by controlling the transfer environment and this is best achieved by using various cooling or heating devices. We found that a foil blanket is extremely useful for long patient transfers. Motion sickness is more of a problem for staff than the patient. Preventative measures include avoiding sitting in the rear-facing seat and always trying to look in the direction of travel. If particularly serious, antiemetics should be prescribed and taken before departure. A knowledge of how acceleratory and deceleratory forces affect the human body will allow you to predict and prevent potential adverse events. Remember the main principles. Control the transfer environment. Decrease the magnitude of these forces by speaking to the driver. Ensure that the patient has had their intravascular volume optimised before departure. Secure the patient, yourself and all the equipment in the back of the ambulance. And remember, a smooth transfer 
is a safe transfer.